Hi everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Olivia, you can call me Liv. I am a qualified physiotherapist and now online coach. Um, living in Dubai, so I am from the UK, living in Dubai with my partner Joe, and we have an online coaching company called Exile Coaching. And this is our channel, so if you are new and you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and in this video today, I am just going to talk about my training and take you through a glutes and hams day. So, Joe, come and talk about training. I'm in my boxes. We'll go get closer. You can't give me two minutes. <laughs> right, well, before he you gets himself sorted. So, it is half nine. I've got my Starbucks and we are going to the gym to meet a couple of friends at 10 a.m to train. So I'm going to be training glutes and hams with Dom and yeah we're going to take you through the session. I'm going to give you all my tips and tricks, things that have helped me personally but this morning whilst I have my pre-workout meal which is oats and I've got apple and peanut butter. Um, I also had some egg whites and a whole egg. Um, I usually have chicken and rice pre but I don't usually train this early so yeah I decided to have my breakfast as my pre-workout meal as long as you have some carbs a bit of fat and some protein pre and um, just so it's a little bit slower digesting but enough to give you some energy it is all good so it's quite a good swap to be fair so in terms of my training it has changed slightly since being here um, and like in in recent months I'd say so last year for me was all just about growing or like my last off season was all just about growing it was kind of just grow everywhere it had been ages since I'd been lean it had been years like four years since I stepped on stage so realistically I had no real idea as to what I wanted to look like underneath because obviously I do um bikini shows and I it was kind of like stabbing in the dark almost like I knew there were like you could see underneath there was like certain things that I needed to bring up but it was more just like bring everything up and kind of hope for the best whereas because I have been lean now um and I know like my weaker areas I know the things that I need to improve on my training has changed quite a lot um and obviously I'm trying to fit in the bikini class so this is something that I want to stress like I obviously train I eat because I like to do bodybuilding and I want to look like a bikini competitor so just because I do my style of training doesn't mean it's right for you um, this is just what works for me and is you know tailored towards my specific goals which at the moment is obviously fitting into the bikini criteria so bikini criteria basically is obviously muscular but not too muscled not too conditioned when you obviously step on stage and generally you've got like that feminine physique with nice cap delts um, obviously not too big in the upper body um, a nice V taper and good strong glutes and the, obviously one of the one things like the downside for me in the bikini class is that generally like you you want to be symmetrical but you don't want quads that are too big and I am super super quad dominant so quite a lot of girls come to me with that same problem like literally everything that they do they feel it in the quads and like I get it <laughs> because that was me I would do hip thrusts I'd feel it in my quads squats quads like everyone would be like do this do that like do do this like do squat this and I'm like I literally can't feel it in my glutes so something that I really had to do was take it all the weight down um, and really focus on like my muscle connection so there are specific exercises now that I really really connect well with um, and they're the things that I literally just rinse like rinse and repeat um, because for me personally like especially with the goals that I have like there is absolutely no point in me doing loads of different exercises changing my exercises up literally every week um, or every few weeks because there's literally only maybe three or four that I actually connect with very very well um, so for me it just makes sense to kind of keep them in and I to be fair like even in this short off season since I finished my prep in October I'd say pretty much like this is probably the most that my glutes have grown in like a very very short space of time so I do feel like it is working um, obviously now I'm going back into a diet phase so I won't be growing I've put my minute. boxes on now here he is <laughs> <laughs> you can move on 
Okay. So we can talk all about your training, can't we? I think. Yeah. Have you ran for your training split yet? No. So the training split we've actually adapted come um, in, come in. to bring up, as she's been talking about, as most bikini girls will, it is glutes, hams and delts. So I think obviously the frequency is one thing you need to look at. To bring up a sort of lagging body part, I think you have to increase the training frequency of that muscle group. Um, so, you know, we're now training it like three times across the week. Mm. But there's a very fine line as to what we can and can't do because if we're training it three times a week and we are trashing that muscle group three times a week, we can only sort of grow from what we can actually recover from. You know, we've got to always sort of train within our recovery capability. So it's all good and well that like you could train glutes seven days a week. Is it going to make them grow? Probably not because they don't grow in the gym, they grow out of the gym. It already they? feels like I'm training legs every single day. Like Come I'm on, move a little bit more. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's my video this weekend. You had your time last week. Cool. Um, yeah. So no, it already, already already feels like I train glutes like every single day. But realistically, I can recover between sessions. So even though it feels like it is a lot, it's nothing that I can't recover from because I feel like yeah. we've been quite yeah we've like. been quite specific in how we've actually programmed it. So obviously. We do three glute sessions or glute ham base sessions a week. Um, one's like obviously full sort of like glute ham session itself. Then one's like tag group delts. Obviously the volume in that session is a little bit lower. Um, and we're not like using big compound movements. Obviously <clears throat> when it comes to like movement patterns and stuff like compound movements in terms of like central nervous system fatigue, muscular fatigue and overall like stress on the body, the more stressful an exercise is, the longer we need to recover from it. So we, we're quite clever in how we program it. So if we can utilize like kickbacks, you know, sort of like <clears throat> exercises like the abductors, um, other little bits of easy, like we're using the reverse hypers as well, I mean, you know, little things that we've got access to in the new gym, which is very like bikini-esque. And then it's important that we don't go too one dimensional. So we still include our compound work. So we're still doing, you know, our sort of hip hinge RDL movements. We're still doing a lot of like dumbbell squat, uh, dumbbell split squat Bulgarian, um, and a lot of hip thrusts, hip thrusts, hip thrusts. <laughs> um, but it's important not to do them every time and trash yourself every time. Um, and the, the important thing is with this, like you've got to take what we say with a pinch of salt because the thing is Liv, and I'm not blowing smoke up her ass because it's her video, but she, she can train very hard. Um, <laughs> so because she can train hard, like it makes a lot of big difference. Like. It, not in an offensive way, like the stereotype of bikini girls, like they go, oh, you know, don't train hard. But in all honesty, like a lot of them fucking really do. Um, so like when you are using like, you know, large weights, like you're doing like a three plate hip thrust and you, you know, you like pressing a load of weight and you're RDL in like hundred kilo and stuff, like this is gonna put a lot of like demand on your body and like they're only like 50, 60 kilo females. So this is a big weight to be moving. So like you've got to realize that um, you can't do that every single day. So it's kind of just being very clever in the way that some sessions are like, you know, pumping more like, you know, very sort of easy to recover from sessions and then combining that alongside. So it's kind of synergizing it together. Um, and then obviously, like she said, reducing her overall, like last year when we were trying to bring up everywhere, it's actually where me and Liv first met, but I was trashing her on hack squats and leg presses and muscle rounds and like leg extension, the stack and... Like we would literally have conversations of who could like leg extension. Mm. Like but I have got bad knees, so I, I couldn't do that too much. But you know okay, I mean? yeah. It's not an ex... <laughs> I'll have a cut off of it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean, that, that was the thing. Like last year, it was like, how can we bring up every single body part as much as we possibly can? Um, and now it's a lot more refined to her physique. Obviously reviewing stage pictures, reviewing where we need to bring up, it's now a lot more appropriate to that. And obviously with Liv as well, like obviously going through a diet phase now, we do have to sort of keep a close eye on the recovery capabilities. And a lot of people think, in a diet, just do more, more, more. Yes, it's great for calorie expenditure. Yes, we're gonna expend more calories. But the important thing is, is if you are then exceeding your recovery capabilities, because recovery capability is, is a sliding scale. It's never sort of the same at any given moment in time. So obviously, when we are pushing more food, um, you know, obviously when you know we're doing less cardio and overall fatigue on the body is less, then we, we can recover from more. And it's as simple as that. But obviously when we're becoming a deficit, it's no longer about building muscle now, it's about maintaining the muscle that we've built through the off season. So it's important to reduce down the volume and not trash yourself. It's about the old saying, you know, stimulate, don't annihilate. So doing enough to keep the muscle there, but not enough to deplete it, flatten it out, because we don't have enough food to then fill it back out. So it's kind of, 
there's a lot of thought process behind it. That's what that's what we're trying to get. To be fair, like we've thought quite a lot about my training, and I'm almost using myself as like a guinea pig because for some reason, like I just feel like I don't know, my training just wasn't working for me. It wasn't giving me the look that I wanted, and I felt like it was probably because I was just training like a bodybuilder. Like we would literally do the same sessions, and like I want to I want to have a specific look, and that's the aim that we're going for. So. Yeah, it's more of like trial and error. Um, this is just what I'm doing right now. So yeah, we're literally just about to head to the gym now. We're late as always, so like we'll, we'll yeah. have to wrap this video up. We'll yeah. have to catch up later on. Um, and we're I am going to be training glutes and hams with Dominica, and we will literally take you through the full session. Yeah, so. and then I'm, I'm going to be training shoulders and hamstrings with Jace. Um, this is going to be actually done for a professional film, so it will be on YouTube, but it's a completely separate video. Um, in a max film so this is like more of a, a full training session in itself it just as like a, a one off edit so gonna inhale our pre-workouts mm -hmm. i've already eaten mine but you better inhale yours mm -hmm. um get caffeinated make our interest and then get straight to the gym so uh, cheers <laughs> we will see you soon hello so i am at trainer Seth with dom hey and we are doing glutes and hammers so i'm quickly just going to run you through the session that we are doing um so i didn't actually go through my split before but my split is currently Heavy legs, upper, rest, glutes and hams, which is the session that we're on today, then upper, and then like my top up session, which is glutes and delts. So that is what I'm doing currently. Um, I've been on the split for like three weeks, um, and I seem to be enjoying it. I actually don't have two rotations, so I've had two rotations previously, whereas I'm literally just sticking to this every week, just because it is literally every single exercise that I personally have kept with really, really well. Um, like I said before, there's just no point me kind of swapping things in and out um, when I just don't really like connect with them and sit well. So yeah, that is what we're going with. So. Ready? We are ready. Um, the session today is we're going to start off with kickbacks. This lighting though. It's actually it's so stupid. <laughs> ghost colour. Um, so the session is a kickback, an abductor to begin. Um, and then we are going to do seven form kick press. They usually do a good booty builder because they have it in this gym, but it is broken at the minute. So the next best thing is super machine hip press. Then we are going to do split squats, we're going to do Smith Machine RDLs, which is a new thing for me that I actually really, really enjoy. Um, and we're going to finish off with hyper extensions. So that is the session, we're going to take you around, give you all of our tips and tricks of what has personally worked for us, um, any form tips that we can give, obviously, to help you grow as Booty too. So <laughs> lives top tips. Yeah, literally. So lives and top. Yeah. So hope you enjoy it. If you've got any questions, you always feel free to ask either of us. And go. Okay. So first exercise we're going to start off with is table kickbacks, and these are going to target glute bead, which is like your upper glute, like the shallow. Try to give that like roundness to a glute that a hip hinge is generally not going to give you. So I think most people. Don't connect with these because they just don't do it right. I think it's just really important, like the setup and finding what works for you. But most importantly, we just don't want to kick directly straight out to the back. So, what I do personally with these, what works for me, is putting the cuff like a little bit higher. So, rather than like it literally being around your ankle, have it a little bit further up. Because for me personally, when I was thinking about it, when I used to do like activation with a band, I would always put the band like higher up. Whereas if I put it around my ankle, like I didn't really feel that much. I just literally felt it in my lower back because I was trying to stabilise so much. So having it a little bit further up for me just allows me to engage my glutes a little bit more without having to focus so much on the stabilisation. And then I also don't want this too low. It just like one notch up, just for me, it gives you more of like a linear pull rather than like the force coming down. And really, we just want it out to the side. So, with a kickback, you want to almost think about your leg coming in a diagonal like this. So, rather than it going straight out to the back, you want it to always think about like kicking out to the side. So, you want to be like 30 40 degrees out to the side and the back. If we, if we just directly kick backwards, you're just going to feel it probably in your lower back, your glute max and your hamstring. But if you can kick it out to the side, that's what we're going to get this sort of glute bead actually activated. So 
going to start off with three sets of these, fairly high reps, fairly low weight for me, that is just what works. Um, and I think when you go too heavy on these, you're focusing so hard on stabilising, because all you need is a pelvic stabiliser, which is why a lot of people feel it on their opposite side as well. So keeping the weight nice and light and really think about contracting at the top. Keeping your torso upright will also help you get a full hip extension. If you're over here when you're trying to kick back, if you actually look at my line of force, I'm not getting any hip extension, whereas if I keep my torso upright, you can see here my hips actually extending. So that is how I do it. Give it a go. I guarantee you'll actually feel it. So something that I also say with doing anything unilateral is always start with your weaker leg first because you want to match it. If you are using your strong leg first, your weaker side might never actually catch up. So visually you're going to look different and then from a strength point of view, you're still just never going to match. So starting with your weak leg first is something that I always do. My left leg is way, way weaker than my right. Um, just one of those things, unfortunately. So yeah, always start with your weak leg first. And especially with things like this, like if you actually want to grow, put as much effort into it as if you were doing a set of squats, hip thrusts, all compound lifts, like it still all matters. So just make sure that you are seeing as much intensity in something like a kickback if you actually want the muscle to grow. Um, train with enough intensity to actually get the stimulus there. So we are now doing Smith Machine hip thrusts. I personally find that Smith Machine hip thrusts work best for me um, rather than like a normal barbell. For me, normal rock barbell, I literally just feel it in my quads. Um, so the only way of getting rid of that is putting a wedge underneath my toes to really, really press through my heels. Um, but when I've got like a Smith machine or a glute machine at my disposal, and I just generally use that instead. Um, you what? It's a 20. So reps for this one, the first set is going to be heavier, so it's going to be like a 10 to 12, um, and then the next set is going to be a back off set, which is going to be a lower weight but higher rep, 12 to 15. When we do a top set and a back off, we both want them to be both as intense as each other, so it's not like one really hard set and then one like okay set, it's just working it in a different rep range with a different weight, but we still want it to be as intense as each other um, so yeah don't use your back off set as yeah it's not it's not a slacking set no slacking hip thrust my main tips would be don't just think about moving the weight you're made to be I think so many people get too caught up I don't know why for this machine especially on moving weight um, I think it's just because so many people now are obviously getting into the gym and yes you want to lift heavy but stay within your means um, for me personally like I'm really strong at something like a hack squat and do like four plates but for a hip thrust it is my weak body part so I have to obviously you know work within my limits so I always always put the emphasis on the feel like as soon as I start to feel other muscle groups like my quads and my hamstrings taking over from this movement I will then drop the weight back down if it is just too heavy because the thing that we need to think about is obviously targeting the muscle that we want to recruit and obviously if you're using all these other muscles just to move the 
weight you're going to be, you're not going to get the side effect, you're not going to get your actual glutes to grow. So I would always, always say, make sure that one, you're using a weight that you can actually lift, and two, think about what you're doing when you're moving. So I think the analogy that I like to use is think about your pelvis like a bucket of water. So you want to get a posterior pelvic tilt. So that is, think about your bucket of water, tipping the water out the back, so you're tucking your pelvis underneath, the water's going to tip out the back. That's the feeling that you want to get, the squeeze that you want from underneath here. Very attractive. <laughs> you nice want that the whole time. Keep your chin tucked in so you don't have any thoracic extension, no spinal extension. Keep everything nice and tight and, and tucked in the whole time. That way you're going to keep your glutes engaged and that way you're not going to get any lower back stress, upper back stress, and you're going to keep the tension where you want. No, but it's cold and I don't want to be lonely, so show me the way, the way. Where did you go? I should know, but it's cold and I don't want to be lonely, so show me the way home. I can't lose another life. I can't lose another life. I can't lose another life I can't lose another Where did you go? I should know But it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely So show me the way, the way Where did you go? I should know But it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely So show me the way, the way Where did you go? I should know But it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely So show me the way where did you go? I should know, but it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely, so show me the way home. I can't lose another life. 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 Where did you, where did you, where did you, but it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely, so show me the way. Where did you go? I should know, but it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely, so show me the way, the way. Where did you go? I should know, but it's cold and I don't wanna be lonely, so show me the way, the way. Where did you go? I should know, but it's cold. So, split squats, I personally do them like this in a squat rack or using a Smith machine. For me, I just like being able to stabilize here. And obviously your ankle being on the actual bar pad is so much nicer than trying to like squish it on a bench. I also use the same arm to same leg, just because for me, thinking about keeping my weight on like the outside of my foot works far better. How did that feel? Yeah. So it works far better for me thinking about keeping the weight on the outside of my foot rather than the inside. Thinking about that knee path being nice and straight. Um, and that for me is what targets my glutes the most. in general so when you are thinking about any kind of leg movement if you want to be quad dominant you want to look at your knee angle so the more knee flexion you can get the more quad dominant it's going to be so the more hip flexion you can get with less knee flexion you're going to make it a more posterior glute ham dominant exercise so I'll try and show you what I mean um, so this will change based on how far you've got your um, stance within a lunge. But for us personally, obviously we want to target glutes and hams. I'm going to have my foot further away from the bar so I get less knee flexion. I'm going to keep my torso a little bit less forward so we can get more hip flexion, more stretch on the glutes because this particular exercise, how Just rude, <laughs> this particular exercise, um, is loading the glue in its length and range so I will show you what I mean. Right, okay so this is what I mean so 
If I was going to do a split squat and make it more quad dominant, I would have my stance narrower. So look at my knee flexion. Lots of knee flexion when you're looking at the angle here. If I was going to make my stance wider, you can see here, less knee flexion, but I'm still getting full depth, but still can't see go anymore, but I'm getting more hip flexion, especially because I'm bent over here, so if you think about your glute the way it inserts. In this portion here, I've got it in this most lengthened position, so we are loading in the glutes lengthened range. Excuse the actual light bounce off my head, like a right egg. Um, but we're doing RDLs. For me personally, it's all about thinking about your hips travelling backwards. I don't come all the way up just so I can keep the tension on my hamstrings. It's just again about really, really thinking about what you're trying to do. Be intentional with your movements. Allowing a little bit of a knee bend will allow you to put some load through your glutes rather than it being so hamstring dominant like a stiff leg. Um, that's just what works for me. Um, and it seems to be it seems to be working. So yeah, these feel good today, feel quite strong. So I'm just gonna stick it the same way again, rather than do the back off and just try and match my reps. end of that session but obviously something had to happen and um, my SD card memory ran out so we finished with reverse hypers hopefully you got something from that hopefully I could give you some of the tips that I have been using to try and bring up my posterior chain now I'm not saying it is one of my strong points it's not but I'm trying to make it a strength I think something that is really annoying for me is that I don't have an off-season booty at all literally like it works well in prep um, because I can get my glutes in um, but in off season literally none of my fat gets stored there so yeah it's really annoying but we're working on building it and hopefully it'll be there and be there to stay so obviously as always if you've got any questions at all let me know or pop them in the comments down below anything that you do want to see from me training food um, I'm here to share it all so obviously as I said I am on my mini cut and I'm hopefully going to be documenting a little bit more about that um, for my photo shoot in a few weeks. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.